Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of my top 10 redstone machines. This is sort of a series that I do here on my channel and what I like to do is I go back and highlight 10 of my previous redstone builds, ideas, and concepts. So essentially this is just a highlight video where I sort of take a look back at everything that I've made in the past six to eight months and sort of just highlight it, show you the builds, and um, just to remind you all, I did do a full video on each of these redstone inventions down in the description. So in this episode, I'm just going to be highlighting a bunch of cool machines and ideas for you guys. Um, but if you want to see the more in-depth video to each of these creations, that will be down in the description along with some of the previous episodes that I highly encourage that you guys go and check out. Regardless, we're going to be looking at some cool redstone inventions today. Again, these aren't a full tutorial on how to build or how to operate each of them, uh, but rather I will just be showing you them, showcasing, and once you guys have a look, um, if you want to look at any of these creations more in depth, that will be located down in the description. Anyway, let's go ahead and start looking at some cool redstone inventions. Okay guys, starting out here we have a pretty cool entrance slash trap into somebody's base. This is great for keeping your stuff well protected, and I like to call it the elytra trap. So the way this guy works is it is an entrance to a base. Now we'll just pretend that we are a random Steve walking through the villages, and we come across this weird looking pyramid thing, this cave thing, and you walk in, you go ahead, push the button, the doors open up, and you're in lava you're most likely dead. Um, so yeah, it's pretty unfortunate for any curious wanderers. Um, but if you guys do know the secret for how to enter this base, it is quite simple. And to do that, all you need to do is grab yourselves an elytra. So this base can only be accessed if you actually have an elytra. All you have to do is go ahead, put it on your guy just like that. So now we would be walking in there um, with an elytra on our back. Then go ahead, click the button. As soon as you start to fall, push the space bar. That's going to activate the elytra and you'll start drifting forward and this way um, you actually enter in to the secret base so now we're sort of in here and then this can be you know where you have your chest full of diamonds or all your goodies or just your average everyday base so it's a really cool entrance um, that obviously keeps out unwanted visitors and you can have a sign saying do not enter um, it's a trap you know stay away and stuff like that and if they try to enter or try to break into your base well they're just gonna fall into their lava death. So um, that's a pretty fun design. I really like how this guy turned out. Now this next invention is yet another secret entrance to a base. Now imagine that we are in survival mode right here and this is just a completely blank wall. There is some water right here, um, but pretend this button is hidden. It's hidden away behind some rock somewhere. Uh, but anyway, to enter the base, all you gotta go ahead and do is click that button, step in this water, um, that's going to open up a door right here for a shulker. The shulker will then go ahead and shoot you with one of his levitation balls. You'll start levitating up. And look at that. Just in the wall here, like it's magic, a magical hole has opened up. We can go ahead, enter the hole. We should have just enough um, levitation power to actually reach the entrance. And then as you enter, go ahead, step on the pressure plate, and that will close the door behind you. So... Was that cool or what? Out of nowhere, we just have a magical shulker door. And obviously the door um, does act as also an exit to your secret base. So to exit it, all you gotta do is walk back out. Um, that's gonna go ahead, close the door, and then we will fall down. There is some water down there. Oh boy, didn't quite make it. Didn't quite make it there. And then before we get shot by the shulker, we'll go ahead, push the button. That's gonna go ahead, clear up the shulker so that way he's nice and safe. And uh, the door up there is also closed as well so it's a very simple door to build all it requires are a couple pistons um, and a couple redstone circuits but it's very easy to build and honestly i think it is such a fun idea because it's a completely unique idea however um unfortunately it, you can't really build it in survival mode um, because at the current moment there's no actual way to transport these little shulker guys around so you're gonna have to have um you're gonna have to be able to spawn a shulker back behind that block, but regardless, it is a fun secret door. Up next is something a little less survival friendly. I ended up building this thing back with the 1.8 command blocks quite a while ago. However, this is by far what I am most proud of this episode. This has to be probably my favorite redstone creation, and what I'm showing you all today 
is the jetpacks in Minecraft. This thing works so well, I'm so happy with how it turned out. Anyway, allow me to briefly demonstrate. So um, the jetpack is acts just like an armor, so you can go ahead, put that on yourselves, um, and then you can see I'm wearing a little jetpack on my back, which is pretty cool. Um, now at the moment, if we go ahead and push the shift key, you can see that nothing's really happening. We're sort of smoking. We're smoking out of our jetpack a little bit, but we're not heading in the upwards direction. And that is because we don't have any fuel. So to get some fuel, all you gotta do is put some coal inside of your inventory anywhere. And then once you go ahead, push the shift key, it will go ahead, eat up some of your fuel, and you will start heading in the upwards direction. Now it's pretty cool. It works with a whole bunch of different command blocks. And essentially on the right there, um, shows my fuel whenever that guy reaches zero it goes ahead and snags away another coal um, now if we go ahead take off our jetpack and try to do it you can see nothing's even happening so I am so happy with how this thing turned out and it is survival friendly too which is the coolest part and what I mean by survival friendly is that it actually takes up coal and you know makes somewhat some sort of sense in survival mode um, the way I'm doing it is I'm actually using the levitation effect to make myself actually fly up a little bit. I did a great job explaining how this actually worked and also a world download for this in the full jetpack video. So if you guys want to see my full jetpack video and more of an in-depth explanation for how this thing works, I highly encourage you to go and check that out. So a while ago I made the rainbow beacon in Minecraft. Essentially it was a beacon with rainbow glass on top of it and it cycled through all the colors of the rainbow in a nice order fashion that looked very pretty and very nice. Anyway, I went ahead and challenged myself to build a rainbow beacon that was completely random. So instead of cycling through all the colors in the rainbow in a nice orderly fashion and then repeating that cycle over and over again, this rainbow beacon actually uses a whole lot of randomizers and a whole lot of timing um, to create sort of a rainbow pattern that chooses a random color every time. So you're never going to actually get the same order repeating uh, pretty much ever. Like that's never going to happen. It's always completely random colors. And I have to be honest with you, um, I was a little bit disappointed with this project. I was expecting it to look much cooler. And honestly, it doesn't look as nice as the rainbow beacon. And also the redstone behind it is much, much bigger. However, it still was a fun build. It was a cool concept. And it's kind of just fun to watch because every time it can it picks a completely random color um, from these four pistons here and from these four pistons here and what that does it creates some weird color combinations and just creates a weird looking beacon it is kind of cool i don't know it might suit some people better some people who are crazy and don't really like a nice orderly rainbow fashion um, but yeah that's the random rainbow beacon now i'm sure a lot of you all have heard of a dunk tank before Essentially what a dunk tank is is somebody sits on top of a stool above a pool of water Then what happens is somebody outside of the tank attempts to throw a ball at a target If they hit the target in the middle something triggers the stool and then whoever is sitting on it falls down into the pool of water It's a fun game usually at carnivals and stuff like that Anyway, I went ahead and did my best to recreate that in Minecraft I'm pretty happy with how this thing turned out actually um, now the first design that I made only works when you push the button. So if you go ahead push the button you see the villager falls down into the water. He is then launched back up by a slime block and the me mechanism is reset. Um, unfortunately when I was creating this guy I wasn't thinking that you had to actually hit it with an arrow. Uh, so this design doesn't actually work with arrows. However if we move over here, this is our dunk tank number two. And this guy actually does work with an arrow. So to play the game what you have to do Stand, you know, from a reasonable distance and you have to try to hit the target. So let's say, oh no, we missed our first shot, but let's go ahead, take our second shot, and we did, in fact, hit the button. So boom, the villager gets dunked into the tank. And then if we walk up and retrieve our arrow, that's going to go ahead and reset the device, and we are good to go to play another round of dunk tank. So it's not very practical. It's just a fun idea, and I think I did a great job of actually making it um, almost exactly to how a whole dunk tank system works in real life. This is probably the most practical machine here out of all the inventions I'm going to be showing you all today. And this is a very, very cool design of a compact storage room 
uh, using minecart chests, which is very unique, and I'm just so happy with how this guy turned out. So, at the moment, we have a minecart chest here, and we can go ahead, right-click it, access the minecart with a chest, store some items in there, and that's all cool and dandy, but say at any moment we want to push this button, what that's going to do is that we'll go ahead and switch the minecarts with a chest around, and then boom, we got a brand new minecart with a chest. We'll just go ahead, put a little spruce in there, push the button, cycle them around, new minecart with a chest pops out, boom. We'll put a little button inside of this guy, circle them around again, boom. This guy, we're gonna store our other spruce wood, and it just goes round and round and round, just like the wheels on the bus. But there are a whole lot of minecarts with a chest here. Look at this, like that is a ridiculous amount. I am so happy with how this guy turned out. Um, it actually works using a slime block down here at the bottom. That slime block goes ahead, launches the minecarts all the way up to the top, and then a piston pushes them around and they go in a nice circular pattern. So this guy, um, not only is it super practical, um, but it's also pretty survival friendly. I managed to get the redstone um, very, very compact. So honestly, if I was playing in a survival world, I would end up building this thing because it's just so tiny. It fits in like a very small wall of your base. And I think there's like nine or 10 or maybe eight. Uh, yeah, I think there's eight. So there's like eight different chests in this one little cube right here. And that's just crazy. That like can hold a whole lot of items in a very small area. So I'm really happy with this thing. I think it looks great. It looks great in any survival base. Okie dokie. Up next is a pretty cool concept for a sort of redstone game. And honestly, I am thinking about actually making a full-on survival-friendly redstone game in Minecraft, sort of using this basic idea. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Right here, we have a nice old baseball field. I'm sure the majority of you guys know what baseball is. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and play some baseball in Minecraft. So the way this redstone device works is we have... Um, it's a little bit backwards just because of how Minecraft snowballs work. So usually you would have the batter right here and the pitcher. The pitcher goes ahead, pitches the ball, and the batter has to hit it into the field. Um, but this way we have it a little bit opposite. So the pitcher is sitting right here in the batter's box, and he's going to be pitching while the batter is sort of standing on the pitching mound, and he's going to be hitting using this sort of slime block. So um, the cool thing about it is if you want to have a friend pitching that can sort of stand up here and click the button, um, but I have it set up to a pitching machine, so that's just a little clock and it'll dispense a ball every few seconds. So here is how you play the game. You gotta stand back here um, by this button and essentially what you have to do is you have to time it. Um, whenever you click the button, it's going to activate that slime block and you have to time it and try to hit the snowball um, using that slime block. It does take a little bit of skill. Ooh, I think we were a little late that time. All right, oh, we might have been, I think we were still a little late. And, oh no, we were a little bit early, but the coolest part about this, oh, there we go. That is a home run. Every hit, um, by the way, is actually a home run. So it, it would be very easy to make a full out game out of this using a whole score. Oh, that was a home run too. I'm on fire, man. That didn't even look like it hit. Um, but the cool thing about this is the dispenser. Like you saw that, um, that pitch right there wasn't even, wasn't even a strike. So the dispenser sort of adds in a hole pitches different strikes, and then he can also throw you a wild pitch. And you know, you gotta try to learn to not swing at that. Oh, that was a bad pitch. Should not have swung at that one. And, oh, that was a good one. That was a good, good home run right there. Anyway, that is baseball in Minecraft. Okay, let me set the scene for you guys. It is Christmas Eve. Santa Claus is coming to our house soon to deliver us presents and stuff like that. And so what I have created here is a chimney designed especially for Santa Claus. This is a Santa Claus chimney. Um, it is designed to help him from the roof into the living room so he can go ahead and deliver the presents and then also assist him in escaping up the chimney because let's be honest, you do not want to be jumping down that chimney when it is on fire. So um, allow me to show you guys how it works. So pretend Santa Claus is hopping down here on your roof. He's gonna go ahead Push your Santa Claus proof chimney. That's going to open up a slime block. He can get on out and boom, the fireplace is back. Everything is fine. He can go ahead, deliver you some presents. Here is a little chicken egg for that amazing child. Um, so once we have delivered our presents and we eat our milk and cookies, uh, we can go up here, click the Santa button. That's gonna go ahead, open up a door. We can walk on top of the slime block. 
get launched up to the top, and we're good to go. And below us, the fireplace is lit. But yeah, essentially it is a Santa Claus chimney. It's a really cool idea. Um, not only can it sort of be used for as a little gimmicky Santa Claus thing, but it can also be used as a secret escape to your whole base. So you can fit this in pretty much in any house and make it look pretty natural. Um, and then say you want to enter a secret room into your house. Well, just like this, you have a fire fireplace entrance and now you're in a secret room and you can have like a secret room in your base and then you can sort of exit and you're back in your base so pretty much anywhere you can fit a fireplace um you can use that as a secret entrance to um part of your base so it's a great idea if you guys want to make like sort of a hidden attic on top of your house and then add just sort of a casual fireplace in the middle hide this button somewhere um, that only you know and then when you push it Boom, it'll just launch you up to the attic where you can keep all your valuable diamonds. So it's a great idea. Not only can it be used for Santa Claus, it can also be used just sort of as a hidden area. This next creation is almost like an entire movie in Minecraft. I pretty much animated with a redstone. It's a really cool idea. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys have played Fallout 4, and what I went ahead and did is I tried to recreate one of the cinematics um, from the video game. So what I did here is this is the vault room that you first leave from in one of the early levels of the game. Now what happens during this scene is we have a little vault arm right here and that vault arm is going to go forward, it's going to attach to the door, take the door off its hinges, the door gets then moved to the side and this vault arm sort of comes back and a bridge appears and you can go ahead and exit the vault. So it's a really cool way to just sort of leave the vault and enter the outside world and see the outside world for the first time after the big nuke explosion. If any of you guys have played Fallout 4, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, allow me to show you all how this works. So we'll go ahead. Um, I imagine this was our little pit boy here and you put your pit boy into the machine and then what happens is some lights begin to flash. The door, the arm moves forward. It goes ahead takes the door off its hinges, the door gets pushed over to the side, the arm then comes back, gets out of the way, and a bridge appears out of nowhere. Was that awesome or what? That was amazing. That is, that is literally so, oh, that is so awesome. That is so nice. All done with redstone, completely automatic. Like that took me hours and hours to design. I'm so happy with how that turned out, that's amazing. Anyway, we can go ahead, enter this, and then what we can do is pull this lever, and what that's going to go ahead and do is that activates an elevator, and this elevator slowly rises up. This is very big opening cinematic scene, slowly rising from the vault, and then as we approach the vault doors, they open up, and we keep heading upwards, and then we can look into the outside, look into the wastelands, and you get the achievement War Never Ends. Anyway, I am so happy with how this redstone turned out. It seriously took me hours and hours, but we sort of managed to make somewhat of an animated movie um, using nothing but redstone. And one of the coolest parts about this is um, that opening cinematic is 100% reversible. So you can go ahead, click this button. Um, what's that going to do? Some lights will blink again. The door comes back. Um, that door comes up. It goes ahead, it closes the door. Uh, then the door comes back. That goes to the side, and we're ready to play the animation again, just like that. So it is so cool how you can just go back and forth, back and forth, and it looks amazing. I am just happy with how this thing turned out. I definitely want to do more sort of animations like this with Redstone in the future. Um, but yeah, that was uh, sort of the vault opening up from Fallout 4. And for my final trick, you guys will see possibly the craziest thing you've ever seen in Minecraft. This is essentially a single chicken farm times 10. This thing's absolutely crazy. I had a lot of fun building this. And uh, yeah, I guess I'm gonna show you guys how it works. Now, unfortunately, I built this thing back in 1.8 and uh, it seems to have broke in some of the new updates. So we will definitely have to revisit this and try to build a new chicken farm here in the future. But I still thought it was at least showing you guys how this farm works. So. Here are the chickens right here that are laying their eggs. It's just some basic chickens on top of a hopper. A minecart with a chest comes by, scoops up all the eggs, and then goes ahead and delivers them over to this side. Now once the eggs come over here, they get placed in a dispenser. 
Um, the dispenser then launches out the eggs. The eggs get pushed up by the slime block and shot over into this giant, giant sort of water bowl. And then as the chickens get shot into the water bowl, you see there's a little baby chicken right there. Um, they get let down here and where they sort of fall. Now, here's where the farm's starting to break in 1.8. Um, chickens behaved differently with minecarts, but anyway, what it's supposed to do is a minecart spawns in right here, picks up a chicken, um, it then goes ahead, gets launched by a couple slime blocks, gets put over here, it dispenses out a chicken, the chicken is then supposed to fall through a ring of fire, it's not really working at the moment, but the chicken falls through the ring of fire, he lands on the minecart, the minecart goes ahead, gets launched up there, and then Gums picks up the chicken again. It looks really cool. It looked amazing when it first worked. Unfortunately, it is super broken at the moment. So yeah, it's supposed to get launched up by this slime block. Oh man, I'm even breaking it more. But once it gets launched up by this slime block right here, it gets launched up by another slime block launched over through a ring of fire. Um, it then lands down here where the minecart goes, drops off the chicken in this little hole right here. Then the chicken, um, gets pushed over. It's supposed to fall in this hole actually and then the chickens wait in there I guess we can go ahead spawn a few chickens and then once the chickens are chilling there You go ahead push this button that falls back the chickens get launched over like that Oh, wasn't that cool or what then it closes some lava gets dispensed and You have some cooked chicken over on the side. So yeah Chicken farm easy easy right easy build pretty pretty practical. Unfortunately, um, it's very, very broken at the moment. It looks amazing uh, when there's like 10 chickens flying all throughout here, going through rings of fire and in minecarts and not in minecarts. It looks really, really amazing. So I highly encourage you to actually go back and watch this full video that I showcased this design uh, when it was actually working because that just looked amazing. Regardless, those are my top 10 Minecraft redstone creations. Again, if you want to see a full video tutorial I did some of them for, even a world download for that particular world, uh, that will be located down in the description. Also, a world download to this world that I'm flying around in right now will be down there as well, so be sure to go check that out, have some fun flying around there and trying out any of these creations for yourself. Anyway, thank you all so much for supporting me these past six months while we've been creating fun machines like this. And uh, hopefully, we will be continuing to build craziness like this. Um, there's definitely a bunch of things that I want to revisit and sort of make a lot better and then showcase in my later videos. Anyway, thank you all so, so much for watching. Be sure to check out the other episodes of Top 10 Minecraft Creations, similar to this one where I showcase 10 of my uh, recent creations and stuff like that and have some fun and show off some cool redstone stuff. So yeah, my name's Crew. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all in the next episode. Adios.